This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Welcome, Carm Capriato, the Service Aftermarket's podcast pioneer with a gold standard of aftermarket business podcasts. Join me for Aftermarket Insights as we advance the aftermarket. And as always, know that you'll learn just one thing. Find us on your favorite podcast listening app and RemarkableResults.biz or on my YouTube channel. Hey, everybody. It's Welcome, Carm, Carm Capriato, the Service Aftermarket Capriato. podcast pioneer with the gold standard. Well, I can't believe it. We're doing that two times. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Carm Capriato, Remarkable Results Radio. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for listening. We are the premier service aftermarket business podcast in the industry. Nine years ago, Jim, we started this thing. Awesome, Carm. I've watched a couple of your episodes. It's very informative and a great show to watch. Well, thank you. You've watched a couple out of maybe, you know, nearly a thousand or two, but thank you. I appreciate that. Anything, everything helps. I'm with Jim Sennett from AAA. Hey, Jim. Hello. Good to have you here. Jim is the uh, manager of the Automotive Repair Network at AAA. And I saw him in, in Atlanta at, at a meeting, a, a Napa meeting. I looked at him and I said, you still living in Buffalo, my hometown? He goes, of course I am. And I says, why haven't we done something? So we're here doing a podcast because of my curiosity with AAA. You've got a hell of a background. We're going to cover it in a minute as far as your education and the years you've been in the business and the places that you used to work that get you into this position you have. But what I was blown away by, and I'm not sure our shop owners out there, technicians out there, appreciate this, 31 million roadside events each year. What are we doing wrong? <laughs> That's what a lot of people say, you know, that you would think that number would be a lot lower than it was. But we do, and you got to remember, we do everything from locking your keys in the car, running out of gas, changing the tire, your battery is dead, or we have to tow you from either a collision accident or a mechanical breakdown. So there is a lot of things out there that we do and people don't realize some of those road service calls are we're coming to you to put a new battery in your car, right? Because your battery has died. AAA has been selling batteries now for 25 years. I think 1999 was our first year selling batteries at the roadside. So we're missing the mark. And if we're not testing batteries in any of our safety inspections, or we're doing a terrible job explaining to the client, look, you're, you're four years in on this vehicle. We've tested it. The battery is going to be okay. It's going to be marginal. We're heading into a, I don't care if it's air conditioning or if it's the winter season, it's going to put a lot of stress on the battery. And your number was 30, how many? 30, 7 million battery calls? 7 million battery calls a year. We have around 10 million tire calls a year. So flat tire, you hit a pothole, you hit a curb or something sure. along those lines too. So yeah, those are our yeah. two biggest calls. Any idea how, because they were running with bad tires, I mean, very marginal tires that we missed? Yeah, that could be a, a, an issue. Like if you're not getting your car safety inspected every year, some states require it, some states don't. You know, at least having your car going every year before you go on a big trip, before you go uh, away on vacation or just to have regular maintenance done, they should do a, everyone's got a different number, but anywhere from like a 25 to a 50 point inspection where it includes checking your tires, your suspension, all your fluids, your filters. That's something I would recommend someone does every year with their vehicle. Yeah, I, I want to go back to that battery thing. And yeah, okay, you guys have 7 million annual battery calls. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you're sure you the biggest battery buyer. Every battery manufacturer loves you guys to death. But to me, when, when I think about the independent service aftermarket, I think about opportunity that we're letting... I mean, here comes the customer. He there's a AAA battery in there, but something that I didn't sell him. I'm I gotta feel bad that I missed this. What can we do about it? First of all, we all know what we can do about it, but apparently we're not doing a great job. Right. Test every vehicle. Um, we've partnered with Napa, and now we carry our AAA batteries in all Napa stores across the country. So if you want to get a AAA battery not at the roadside, you can now go into Napa and purchase the battery. Um, members get a twenty two percent twenty two dollar discount on those batteries when they buy if they show their card and save and they buy a triple a battery you can also buy them in the aftermarket world they give them a great deal on the wholesale pricing for them for triple a members they come with a three-year free replacement warranty which is one year more than an Napa regular battery is and we have a six-year limited warranty on the batteries you, you say that a triple a AAA member can go into an Napa store and, and buy a battery people really 
change their batteries? Did they really get and understand what it takes to do this? Yeah, over the last 18 months, we've sold over a million batteries with Napa where people are coming in either from the wholesale market or someone's coming in from the over the counter and putting the battery in. Oh, all right. You said wholesale market too? Yeah, it cools both of them. If you break okay. it down, I would say... Maybe it's some, 80-20. Yeah, I think it's more 80-20. So I'll probably, I would say maybe a hundred to 200,000 people maybe changed their own batteries okay. in, in the right. last 18 months. Yeah. I was talking to a friend the other day. I live in the country, you know, and just about every other house has a barn, a metal barn, a pole barn. And we were chatting about the fact that, let me see, I want to put up a shop here in the country where it's in dairy country and every quarter of a mile, there's a house. How successful could that shop be? It was kind of, if you will, we were playing with ideas. He says, okay, so there's this many people that live in this particular zone, this this area. But to stop and think that every barn you see probably has a lift in it. And probably, people are probably, unbeknownst to all of us, because we're not working in our yards anymore. We're not working on the driveway. We're working in our beautiful barn with a lift in it. And I find that I guess still they can go into a, a store, get, get a battery, put it in their tractor, put it in their truck or, or do anything like that. But let's think of the metropolitan areas where, and, and these great successful shops that I've gotten to know over the years that listen to this show, that appreciate the information that we give them. I really would love to encourage them in their next morning meeting, their weekly meeting to say, are we doing a real, a good enough job on batteries? Because AAA has 7 million annual battery calls out of what 300 million vehicles. That's a lot of vehicles. What percentage is ours and what are we missing? And if we're there to love our customer to death, get them to trust us, keep their car vehicle safe and reliable, we must be failing on testing batteries. Yes, I think a, that, a, a logical topic for a meeting, right? Right. I think people, you know, underestimate how important a battery is nowadays with stop start technology. The car's turning off and starting back up again. The average lifespan of a battery is somewhere around three years, right? Yeah. With the new um, batteries that they have. You know, there's different ones, flood acid batteries, and then there's also AGM batteries, and there's some glass mat batteries and stuff that are coming out that are a little more durable. But I would say that uh, I think we underestimate how much our infotainment centers inside our cars, you know, when we hook our phones up to them, we do our navigation, all that stuff draws power and it puts wear on that battery, right? The battery in the alternator system. And we've teamed up with Napa and we have a, a program called Test Every Vehicle. It's going to be a new program where they can get some supplies sent to them about testing batteries and putting it in their shops and window clings and tents that go on uh, the counters and, and everything. And they can earn money back to earn for a free tester inside the shop. So I definitely would look that up. That that promotion is going to start here on May 1st. So it's, that, br that's it's brilliant stuff, Jim. I, I love it. It's too bad we need an inducement to test batteries. It's a shame. But listen, with digital vehicle inspections and cameras and information flow from a tester into a SMS or taking a picture of, of the readout, I mean, there's a lot of ways to be able to so incredibly honestly show this customer, look at this battery just may not make it. Let's do the right and the smart thing. You're going to keep your car for another three years. We know that it's time to do the battery. I don't believe that a battery is a hard sell today. I don't believe so either. I think it's a pretty uh, overlooked item that we, we seem to take a, take advantage of because when our car goes out there, we start it up every morning and everyone thinks their battery's fine. And when you test it, it might only be starting at half the percentage that it used to start at, right? It, they kind of slowly die over time or one time it gave them a problem, but it started up the next time. So they figure, oh, I got more time with the battery until that day comes when you, and you have to call us here at AAA. Jim, the power ever go out in your house during a storm? Always. Well, I, I, I have a, I live in a bad zone. It's been the worst year ever. And you know how that feels, right? Definitely. Yeah. I would imagine that transcends to a vehicle whose battery died and you're, you're stuck on the side of the road. Yeah. I can tell you, uh, you know, working for AAA for the last 10 years, nobody plans a breakdown, right? And when their car breaks down, it makes the, the rest of their day kind of go into a, a tailspin, if you will, or it, it pushes things around. And it never happens like when, hey, I got no, I got free time this afternoon. I'm just going to go for a drive. It usually happens when, hey, well, I got to get the kids to school. I got a dentist appointment. I got to go to work. I got this meeting. And then they go out and their car battery is dead or they go out and have a flat tire. So uh, keeping these maintenance items and, and having these maintenance inspections done on a regular basis is so important nowadays especially with some of these EV vehicles where these vehicles are super heavy 
and the, more than a regular gas car. And they're wearing those tires out quicker, right? They're hitting potholes. They got thinner sidewalls. They got bigger, shinier, nicer wheels. 20-inch wheels, 19-inch wheels are common on vehicles nowadays when back a couple of years, like 16, 17 was the common size. So it just it plays into a lot of making sure you keep your vehicle and maintenance up to date. You graduated from Erie Community College here in Buffalo. I'm on the advisory board. Will you come to the college and speak to our students? I would love to. I I'd know you to. would. I know you <laughs> would. And, and, and look, at here's the deal. There's a lot of great people in the industry that groomed. You were a technician for a long time. I mean, you worked for, you've been in the industry 25 years, 10 years now with AAA, but you did all the great stuff, lead, manage, good years and all that stuff in, in your lifetime. Hell of a pedigree. Wouldn't it be cool to get in front of the students who are just figuring out what's life ahead of me look like? Yes, and you have I mean, Jim Sennett come in and say, look, let me tell you what I'm doing now. And let me tell you that I was in your shoes once. I'd love to have you come on in as an alumni that's doing great things. Yeah, I think that's the part that people overlook. To where I get to the position where I am today, I would never have gotten there without my technician. I wish I would have gone through a traditional training program. Unfortunately, when I went to college, I went and took other subjects. I, I graduated with a criminal justice degree, but I learned on the job, right? I got to go learn through Goodyear. Goodyear had a great training program, and I got to go through their program and learn how to fix cars. If I would have known 18-year-old Jim comes back and says, hey, what do you want to do? I would have started with the automotive technology program at any community college or, or any of these other you know, UTIs or Wyotechs out there. I would have started with that to get a better foundation than what I had. I think now that those programs have come full circle and, and they are way more advanced than they used to be, but it's a great career. You know, it, it leads to so many things. You know, you start out turning wrenches and working on cars and diagnosing cars and stuff like that, but it turns into, hey, you're going to be a store manager of, of a, a local aftermarket store. You're going to be a the service manager at a dealership, a service director. Like Those jobs usually start with somebody that worked in the back and has an understanding of how to fix cars, right? So you need those fundamentals that you're going to get at these training programs to work your way up into where you go today. So I love those years. I still fix my own cars. I'm one of the few people out there. I still turn my wrenches on my own cars. And I have a, two adult children that always call dad to fix their car too. So I'm always still out there. And I'm, I'm still trying to sharpen my skills and trying to remember the stuff, right? I've learned so much stuff that I'm starting to forget it because I've been so far removed from fixing cars every day. But I think that program is such a great deal. And it's changed so much since I've been in there. And it, if being more electrical and diagnosing and working on a computer and less turning a wrench and, and getting under a car and getting dirty. I think people need to understand this is a great, challenging and rewarding career. And it's not what you guys think it is. It's not getting dirty all the time and being covered in grease. It's figuring out problems. It's diagnosing electrical issues. It's, it's There's so much more to being a technician nowadays than there ever was when I was. Hey, it's no secret. We're facing a technician shortage, and Napa Auto Care has a solution with the Napa Auto Care Apprentice Program. The program was pioneered by one of our own. Pete McNeil and Master Technician Jake Sorensen from McNeil's Auto Care in Sandy, Utah, realized that the problem of not having technicians available for hire was not going to solve itself and decided to take action and look at a different audience of individuals available for hire. A focus was put on younger individuals with the right passion, desire, and attitude to work in the automotive repair industry. Jake and Pete sought after these individuals and developed a technician apprentice program to give them the training needed to become a successful technician in today's world. The NAPA Auto Care Apprentice Program includes a comprehensive nine-stage curriculum that includes a variety of types of training, and they are classroom training videos exclusive to the apprentice program. Now, these videos provide in-depth training from a successful master technician. Also, Autotech classes with instructor-led courses offered through Napa Autotech and Autotech eLearning. This web-based eLearning is designed to target specific training topics. And finally, hands-on learning. The apprentice will apply the skills gained from the classroom training videos, Autotech instructor-led training, and Autotech eLearnings in the shop with the guidance of a mentor. The apprentice program curriculum is competency-based, meaning an apprentice can move through each stage at a pace that best suits them. Most apprentices complete the program within two years. Upon completion, apprentices will have earned ASE G1, A4, A5, and AC certifications, adding industry validation to the skills an apprentice acquires. 
Look, having an apprentice in your shop will ultimately benefit your bottom line as they advance through the program. And in most cases, as the apprentice develops their skill set producing billable hours, you'll begin to see a growth in your gross profit by stage five. One of the largest barriers to entry for individuals looking to enter the automotive repair industry is the cost of tools. Now, keep your apprentice motivated with an apprentice toolkit. Now, Napa Auto Care has worked with our supplying partners to offer an exclusive comprehensive tool set, including a four-drawer tool card for all registered apprentices. Hey, to learn more, members can visit member.napaautocare.com. Turning lunches. People have heard me say this before that Hollywood has given us a really bad perception of who we are and what we look like, dirty, greasy, always. This language shift that I'm working my butt off in the industry, the rise of the mechanical and technology specialist by lifting the language, what we call each other and what the industry looks to us as what we do. We're specialists. And to your point, this very high, we're a high tech skilled trade industry today, and no one wants to talk about that. This shortage that we have could go away if we all went to the middle school. And in fact, they're just talking to somebody yesterday that where should we really start? And the words were, let's get to middle school because it's going to take time for them to look at that time for their parents to think this through time for the educators and the counselors to say, Hey, Johnny's not really meant to go to the four-year college of which I get credit for. If he goes, he's a skilled tradesperson. And we need them so badly. Can you imagine if we weren't this passionate in 10 years? Who's going to fix our HVAC, our toilet, our water line, put up a closet for us? Who <laughs> no skilled trades people out there? When I was starting to research this problem, probably about four or five years ago, I looked into the technician shortage and what it's going to look like and what can we do as AAA to help people, right? We need technicians from roadside problem solvers that we have that drive tow trucks, that drive our light service vehicles that go out and do those things on the side of the road for our members. And we also have technicians in our approved auto repair facilities and also our own own repair facilities that you got to look at, like, it is not. It's not what we used to be, right? It's what we're going to be. I think that's where people kind of get hung up on it. If you go out to Europe, I did some research in Europe. I think around eighth, ninth grade, they take a test, right? And they they say, hey, this kid's destined for college and this kid's destined for a trade. You know, he's more hands-on learning. He's more Mm -hmm. visual learning. And this kid can go to college and go to work. I think we've kind of missed that boat here in the U.S., I myself, I have one child that went to a four-year college, and I have one child that's in the trades. He's working as an, uh, an electrician apprentice, right? So they went their own separate ways because they both had different views on on what they wanted to do when they grew up. And I and none was and on my house because obviously I'm a trade guy, but I also went to college. I, there's no difference before. I think they're both successful in, in what they do, whether they went to college or they go to learn a trade. And that's what we got to get rid of that stigma in the United States that hey. If you go to a trade, you're not, you don't have less of a career than you do if you went to college. I wonder what you learn in the first two or four years of college today. Do you think you learn a lot? No. Do you know, <laughs> do you know how much math you had to take that you don't use today? You know, I, I have still have a logic. I understand why we ever had to learn logic in math because I've never used it <laughs> since I left school. I've been on the war path lately, and and I and I just spoke that this morning to our independent group here in Buffalo. I said, I says, and I know you've heard me. Stop me if you've heard this from me again. I always tell people, but when I went to college, those college years were really good learning college years. There's a lot you learned about life and and, and the career you wanted to be in. And then this whole master's thing came up. Jim, stop me anytime if you disagree with me. Then this master's thing came up and I'm sitting, just imagine I'm I'm on the board of directors of a college and I'm thinking, wow, how can we generate more revenue? Well, let's dumb down the four years and make college really happen in the two or three year master's program. Yeah, that's Hmm. crazy. I'm asking a bunch of people today that have kids in school or just coming out of school. And I says, don't you think that what they're coming out of the four years with today, the academic side is no better or smarter than the high school we got maybe 25, 30 years ago. And, and, and to the point, everyone said, yeah, Carm, you're right. So here's the point. We're advocates for skilled trades, right? We're advocates for mechanical specialists, for technology specialists, for calibration specialists, for air conditioning specialists, for alignment specialists. We're advocates for this. 
we don't know how to sell it. We don't know how to sell it to the counselors. We don't know how to sell it to the parents. We don't know how to sell it to the kids. Now, we've seen some ads for some governors of states that say skilled trades are welcome here. We got all kinds of things to embrace and love you. And here in the buff, we have a program called BOCES, the Board of Cooperative Educational Services that have the cosmetology, they have the, the culinary, they have the automotive, they have the wood shop, they have those in a place where the kids get bused to them for the day and they come back. But I don't think the encouragement to get kids to go into the skilled trades program financially is inducement to the high school. So I'm not sure they talk a lot about it. And the only way to my listener, the only way I think we're going to flip this, Jim, tell me if I'm right or wrong, is that we got to go out and we got to knock on a door and says, we're going to come to career day. We want to come to parents day in the class. We want to make an appointment with a counselor. We want to go to these skilled trade facilities and say, can I come in, speak to your class? Can I teach your class? So I, I'm, I'm sorry I, I was long winded, but hopefully there's a handful of people that are listening or a bushel full of people that are listening that says, Carm, Jim, you're right. We got to do more of this stuff. If not, we're going to suffer down the road, and it lends myself into let's build our apprentice programs up. Right. I think that, you know, I sit on the board for ASC as an education foundation program. And Fantastic. I, I, we are looking at that as a, as a whole through for the Automotive Service Excellence Committees and how we can do that, how we can get these kids in college and middle school and high school and after that to be involved in this. So, you know, there's some programs out there now that it's kind of earn and learn at the same time. So you can make some money and also learn a trade and you're not going to come out of that with a debt like you do with college or, or anything else like that. There's a, an apprentice program that we're working with uh, Napa that we hope to launch here in the, the second quarter that they'll get to earn and learn at the same time. You get to go take somebody that never worked in the automotive field before, bring them into an automotive shop, and they're going to teach them the way how they do it over a two-year program. They're learning, but they're also earning money and earning a paycheck every week, which I think is a very, very understated thing that we can do here in the automotive field, right? Like earn and learn at the same time. It's a great way to do it. You're going to come out with no debt, and you're going to have a great career for ahead of you. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. All the work that you're doing to help on the educational side and, and all the great work that you do with our, our great uh, partners, NAPA. Tell me about your great 12 years of working for Goodyear. So Goodyear is a, is a great company. They have a very proud company of what they do and how innovative they are with tires and, and the performance of those tires. You know, they have EV tires. They're the first ones to come out there. They're, they were OEM tires on about 30% of the cars manufactured in the United States. And, and I think that was a great program to learn. You know, I always worked in the aftermarket. I never got to work in the dealership or the OEM space. I always worked in the aftermarket. So I had to be good at a lot of different cars instead of really, really good at one car. So I like the challenge of, hey, this week I'm pulling a Ford in and tomorrow I got a Toyota. Next week I got a, a Jeep. And the week after that, I got a Hyundai. Like, I just think, you know, it was really cool to learn all the difference make some models that you don't always maybe get to see if you're working in an OEM market. And I like to have the challenge of trying to figure out what those are and how they can be fixed and, and how it can expand my horizon, right? I was always, I always had the car where I would go home that would stump me and, you know, you'd be looking at the internet at night after work and trying to figure out why is this car doing it? Why can't I get it fixed right? What am I missing, right? And you go into chat rooms and forums and now they got programs from Mitchell and Denefix and all these other ones that, that kind of streamline that and help you out a lot. But I think that was really cool, like learning all the different makes and models and not just working on one model. And that they're a world-class organization. They put a lot of money in training and training their technicians. They put a lot of money in their equipment. They have new alignment equipments, new diagnostic equipment. They, they really, really do a great job at the aftermarket and, and getting your car fixed. I don't know if you know this, car, but I'm sure you do. But, you know, after the first three years of car ownership, the amount of people that go to an aftermarket or a smaller localized or independent store is about 78% of the time. Yeah, yeah. It's only 22% of the time going back to the dealers, right? The first three years, it's kind of the other way, right? Like 75% go back to the dealer because generally it's covered under warranty. Yeah. But I, with this, the spot for the independent owner is out there. And I think it's a spot that we need to grow here in the future because – you know, cars aren't getting any uh, younger, as we say, and they're always going to be there to break down. 
and someone's going to be there to fix them. And we just don't have enough people to do that. Well, thank you for that. A couple of great things come to mind in, in your most recent monologue here. Goodyear. We were Goodyear Tire Distributor back in the day of the family business. And I'll never forget, I was a young man and dad was going down to an advisory council meeting in Akron to Goodyear. We got a tour of how to make tires. And that was the start of me loving to go on factory tours because I just, you know, you're sitting there, here, maybe I was 14, 15 years old and I'm looking, my mouth is open and, you know, how they get that tire in the mold and, you know, the, from the, we're churning the rubber. It was the most fantastic tour. We saw everything from A to Z when that tire finally came out of the, out of the mold. So thank you for reminding me how important Goodyear was in my life many years ago. How important further education is and how we absolutely need to be involved. Agreed. Agreed. I think it's a, it's a great problem to have so that we can help adjust, uh, not adjust, help have the kids for the future, right? I think it's a great time to be in this business. And it's a, I think it's transitioning to a great field. And it's going to, I think, start to take off here in the next couple of years. As these cars get electrified and hybrids and stuff, I think there's going to be a lot more technical guys out there that are going to be needed that can read a computer, that can follow a circuit from start to finish. I think those things are very important. And it's not an easy task. You know what I mean? People have to learn these things. And I think it's such an interesting and, and a changing field, which is awesome. Yeah, you, you, those guys are out there. But here's to the point, because of the technology changing at the rapid pace that it is, we need more in the pipeline. And those more in the pipeline, they already exist in many shops. We just need to encourage we really need to evaluate what kind of learners that we have in our place. I mean, we have some fabulous work with their hands, close their eyes 20 minutes later, the break job's done to people that they just want to wear the white lab coat, hang out with the, with the tablet and their buddies and their network. And, and you, like you say, all the access to online data to solve a problem. They're problem solvers. I think this skilled trade that we're in we are failing miserably to explain it to young people and parents then well how can how much money can they make everybody's throwing out really big high wish high end numbers and in many cities around the country and in many great shops around the country people are making that upper end wage but when a shop owner says to themselves i don't know how in the hell i could do that well, that's where coaching and consulting and networking groups come in because so many of the people that recognized and saw their the, the opportunity that they would have by learning, stop trying to be a business owner, becoming one, and they see that they can make the kind of money that they can hire and retain really, really good people and pay a really strong, positive wage for the cost of living in your market. It's not hard to do. It's a heavy lift, a lot of work. A lot of learning, a lot of leadership change, a lot of finance. Oh, anyway, you, you get it because you're out there. You're seeing that. You're feeling that. You're talking to the people. You're seeing. I don't think the, the, the AAA shops that, that support you and you support them are marginal shops. They're all top people. Agreed. I think that they're very, very good shops. I think that if you're not in part of a 20 group or a, a, biz, a business to business group or a group of peers or a chamber of commerce business, whatever you're in this group, you're definitely missing out. Having to hear from your peers and what they do and what's going on and the struggles they face, which are probably the same struggles you're facing and how they combat them is a great way to learn, right? Going to those meetings, people think, oh, it's just guys in a room talking, drinking coffee, but they share a lot of information. Those 20 groups are, are huge to be successful in this business yeah. and sharing that knowledge back and forth is huge in this business. Well, look, hey, thank you so much for all that you're doing for AAA and the, the partnership that you have with Napa. I am going to reach out to our department chair, give your email to Vinny Laverde and say, get this guy in to talk to a couple of classes. And I appreciate you doing that. And number two, we've got to stop getting anyone to represent our great independent service aftermarket as mom and pops. I've recently heard that more than a couple of times. I've been very vocal about the negativity that it brings to people at a career fair this week at our college. Who knows? Maybe AAA should have been there. I don't know. It would have been cool if you were there. Point is, people come up to us and say, oh, this is the mom and pop table. And I almost 
I blew a, a cord <laughs> 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 because all these guys were top shops, great shops. And that's the outside exposure that, that we're getting. To your point, after 70, 78% of out of warranty or 70 to 78 percent of out of warranty vehicles come to us yeah, and, the the repair shop, and, right? yeah, and the dealerships are after that they are they're after it in a, in a really big way and that's why we have to have better and more sophisticated than we ever were i, well, I think like you also touched on a point there real quick that hey you need competition right there, there needs to have independence we need to have oems we need to have mass yeah. retailers like firestone and goodyear we need to have all those in the market because it helps everybody as long as they think it is their competition, but it helps everybody. Anybody that's out there that's not affiliated with an OEM manufacturer helps this industry. That's right. And they all have their own customers. They really, really do. You know, the drop the key customer here, fix it. That's not any place that Goodyear doesn't romance people like that. You know, we have our own customers based on the trust in the perception that the client has that there's a lot of people that want to do business with an independent because they appreciate the relationship. I've heard too many stories of late about how the dealerships aren't loving their customer like they used to. They're saying that's kind of been a nosedive, but I haven't talked to the dealerships on that. I've just talked to some car owners that are in this industry that have a warranty recall. They can't get it done. And they feel really strange as to how they're being managed and handled and obviously it's a reflection on well when i'm done with the warranty i'm never coming back attitude we got to open our arms like big bear hug stuff i've I've unfortunately heard that more and more of people saying hey i'm never going back to dealer after the experiences they've had that in the, in the last two or three years because they also are feeling the crunch that we're feeling right they don't have enough technicians they don't have enough people to fix the cars that they're selling yeah. let alone do yeah. all the recalls Thank you so much for all that you're doing for AAA and reaching out to the industry and doing some stuff and uh, getting involved with ECC. I got to get you involved in some way a little bit more. You're an important guy here in the city that we should get so, some more of your bandwidth here for education. ECC or, so, or even BOCES. I love to go talk to high school kids too. All right. right. All involved. right. We're going to try to find you a connection to there. Uh, Jim Sennett, manager of the Automotive Repair Network at AAA and all the great advice you've given us. Test them batteries. Thanks for being here, my friend. No problem. Thank you, Carl.